Uh, so great to see you both. Uh, thank you for another compelling and terrifying series. <laughs> I actually watched the entire thing because I couldn't stop. Oh my um, gosh. Ashley, Michael, let's just start with you because, I, I, okay, we, we've seen from the season one, clearly we are obsessed with this topic coming from the podcast mm -hmm. and your great yeah. series that you guys gave us. What is it about this? Why are we so obsessed with this type of true crime? What do you think? What have you learned from the first season? I have a theory about this. Okay, <laughs> so, let's you know, hear it. I yeah, think, let's hear it. I think that we tell stories to understand the things around us that we can't, right? From the beginning of humanity, that's why we tell stories. And I feel like we live in such a complicated world right now. The true crime genre gives us an opportunity to kind of take power over injustices in our world and find catharsis through um, holding people accountable in those stories. You know, yeah. we don't always, we don't always, the bad guys aren't always caught in our, in our stories. You know, the bad guys As aren't always see. punished. Yeah. But there is accountability that seems consistent in these stories and in our in an our season, obviously, um, you know, these whistleblowers risked everything they had to yeah. and Benita as well, everything she had to step forward and speak up when they had very little chance of of, of having it make a difference. And they made this huge difference in the entire world of medicine. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just so, like I said, so compelling. And Patrick, you know, I, I was wondering what you guys are, what, what you were looking for to kind of maybe step it up with this season. I mean, clearly we've got this charismatic guy, everybody's taken in by him, but it, it's another level because it's not just the medical community. I mean, he conned a very smart woman as well. So was that something that you were looking for to make it maybe more humanistic in that in that way as well? 100%. Yeah, I mean, you, you look, you, you nailed it. I, when, when we first pitched this show back in 2018 to try to find a buyer, <clears throat> one, of the, one of the questions asked was, how are you going to do multiple seasons? And, and I said, beyond the fact that there are, there are unfortunately multiple stories out there to be, to be mined, uh, the goal was always for each season to sort of stand on its own. Right. Um, and for it, if you took the name off of it and you showed them, they would feel like, like similar enough, but you would feel like the stories, the characters, and even I was talking about at the cinema and the cinema also feels really, really different. So they can absolutely stand on their own. What this story does so well, in, in my opinion, beyond just introducing, you know, the, the, the love story aspect of it, but I feel like it took sort of the foundation that season one had and it deepened everything mm -hmm. in my opinion it it sort of ratcheted up uh the, the you know the thriller aspect of it i think that season one is much more like a horror story For and sure. this has got a lot more nuance and depth to it i believe that the the two quote unquote bad guys are extraordinarily different um you know you know right from the jump what's going on with christopher dunch but this is more of like a slow insidious build with paolo macarini which yes. i will you know ash and michael from the very beginning when when she took over the range she talked about that she talked about how it, it has to almost be like a slow boil where you're you're really just easing your way in and, and it can't have that same you know, like bam that season one had um yeah. you're gonna it's gonna grow on you and i what i will say and then i'll shut up is is that as i watch <laughs> these cuts come in yeah it, it was everything she pitched to me, you know, before they started. Like, I, right. you know, I genuinely fell for, I fell for what she was selling uh, as the show progressed. Uh, and yeah. you really feel the slow boil. Oh, yeah. And then you need uh, a pretty smooth character, you know, uh, actor to play this guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, Edgar couldn't have been better. Uh, listen, you know, good looking, charismatic. Yeah. Well, I would call him. I could go him. on. Yes. <laughs> no, That's right. That's right. <laughs> Andy Moore is a smart chick. Come on, no, but seriously, I mean, Ashley, Michael, I mean, finding him was, especially with all the languages and everything, what a godsend, serious. I mean, honestly, like, well, he speaks all of those languages. And, well, he spoke, like, a little bit of Russian, but now he speaks even more Russian. <laughs> so he added that to his resume. Um, yeah, he really... Um, he is that character in a lot of ways. He personifies that character in a lot of ways. But... I think the most important thing that Edgar brought and Jennifer Morrison, the director and I went and met with him, you know, early on, we were trying to 
real men. And, uh, and he came to the character from a really thoughtful perspective, which was important because it's the way I think we as writers come to the character, which is, I want to show this guy is three dimensional. This guy is not a monster in his mind. Right. So right. Right. he is do he is taking steps to move medicine forward in our world. And that is his story, according to him. And I thought that was really smart and important for us to tell a story that was three dimensional. And and you're right, like, you know, we have to sign on with Paulo right away. Um, there was there was almost like worry that's like, is he too is he selling this too well? Are we going to know that it's Dr. But no, it's Dr. Death. We get there. Um, it's Dr. Death. You, it's you definitely Death. get there. Yeah. yeah. But how did, it, how did it affect him in the end, Patrick, or, or whoever, whichever one of you want to take it? Um, because you can't play a person like this and go home and go, hey, everything's fantastic. Like, I can't imagine that it didn't really affect him personally. There was a point during every every stage of, of this show, the writer's room, production and post where it hits you <laughs> the gravity of what this guy did and and because edgar was so focused on you know coming into this character as the hero of his own story which we all are there was a moment and it was on set um when we were filming the the little girl hannah warren who was born with tracheal genesis she didn't have a windpipe um and he came to set visibly upset that day and we had spent the day before um doing scene work with the little the twins that played the little girl and then this was the day that he was supposed to perform the surgery and he was like emotional because like i can't believe what this man has done right and 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 that's really what it comes back to is it's the patients it's their story in the end you know it's we kept their names and we tried to keep their stories as close to reality as we could because we wanted to honor their their journeys and what they went through and their families yeah. went through yeah the, i think it was episode five the, the girl from turkey oh my yes. god i mean i just anyway people watch the series it's amazing thank you so thank much you. for your time and we we love you here in canada so keep them coming okay amazing thank you so thank much you. Have, happy, happy holidays, holidays. happy holidays you too. thank you bye-bye all right